Hello and welcome to this big picture overview of instructional design. This big picture overview is being presented right now in the course because you are at a point in project development where you have worked with a team to identify an instructional goal from a client who is a more traditional classroom teacher interested in facilitating not only a collection of skills associated with science content, but also skills associated with, um, with science thinking. And that can be very, very different. And so she's asked for your help and your team has identified an instructional goal and has analyzed it, it has identified um, a learning context that might provide some meaning and purpose to learning that overall instructional goal. And you're at a point where you're just about ready to start developing the instructional strategies and the materials to go along with it. And so this is a very good time to stop and reflect on the process of instructional design, as well as sort of highlight some areas where it, it seems some students in, in this project have been struggling. And I think the reason why some students have been struggling with some of the basic instructional design con concepts is that um, many students come into this class with some experience and some schooling associated with lesson planning or curriculum development. But the area of instructional design and systematic instructional design might be something that's very new um, to many of you. And so I wanted to um, provide this overview as well as specifics about the instructional design process. You could better so understand the difference between instructional design and curriculum development or lesson planning. Now I'm going to begin this overview by discussing two analogies that I think kind of highlight some of the differences between instructional design and things like lesson planning or curriculum development or other, other um, activities that teachers do to help plan instruction. And the two analogies I, wanna, I want to present have to do with, first of all, um, planning a dinner party. That's the first analogy. And the second analogy is going to be planning the design of some type of dwelling or structure related to architecture. So I wanna talk about these two analogies right off the bat. And I'll start with um, planning a dinner party. So the two graphics on the screen represent um, two different aspects of planning a dinner party. On the left, we see a picture of people who are actually enjoying the dinner party or participating in it in some way. And I am not sure what the event is, but they all have crowns, and so it must be something important. On the right, I have an image of a person working in the kitchen to prepare a meal. And it is my contention that, that from a, an analogous situation, Instructional design is similar to planning a dinner party, whereas lesson planning or even curriculum development is more analogous to one part of planning a dinner party, and that is, um, that is actually preparing the meal. And so I want to discuss that in greater detail. First of all, let's talk about something that most of you are probably more familiar with than structured instructional design, and that is planning a meal. So kitchen and you're planning a meal, you go into the experience with, um, with probably a, um, a recipe book and a collection of ingredients that you know are in the kitchen or that you've procured for the kitchen. And your goal is to prepare the meal. That's the goal. Well, in lesson planning, um, teachers often go into the process making decisions about what students should learn and how they will learn it. That is the experiences that they will have to learn things. Um, and they go into the experience with some resources that they use in the planning process. And one thing that's very common is a pacing guide that might be part of a, um, of a school district or school divisions um, curriculum um, sort of environment. So you have pacing guides. Teachers also commonly look at the resources that, that have been assigned to a classroom, if any have been assigned, textbooks in particular, and they might look at those textbooks and 
make decisions about what students will learn and in what order they will learn them based on the structure of the textbook and what outcomes are facilitated by those resources in the textbook based on things like pacing guides and curriculum guides and resources like textbooks teachers might sit down and 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 begin the planning process by sketching out what a week might look like or what an entire nine weeks might look like uh, for an instructional experience and they might create some some a calendar for specific content areas and again a lot of the material and a lot of the skills to be facilitated within those content areas might come directly from the resources that are selected or are available um, in advance and so and so that is a very common man way in which teachers typically would go about the planning process. And again, I think it's very analogous to preparing a meal. And let me just elaborate on this slightly. So, so somebody is in the kitchen preparing a meal and one of the things they're going to do, they have a recipe book and they have a, um, they have various, um, ingredients at their disposal in the kitchen and various kitchen tools. And one of the things that they will consider, obviously, is the general purpose of the dish that they're preparing. So when they go to select a menu, they might, um, the, the, the chef might consider whether or not it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, or dessert, or something else that is being prepared. How many people should the, um, should the dish serve might be something that is used to help decide whether or not the recipe will be used as is, or whether or not it will be doubled or halved, or something like that. In choosing a recipe, the uh, chef or the cook might consider what has worked before and what they know how to do and what they've had success with in the past. And again, it is very common um, for people preparing a meal to follow a recipe, whether it's written down in a book or whether it's something that they've done enough of in their life that they can just do it from memory. But they do follow those steps and they might select a recipe based on sometimes based on the ingredients that are already in the kitchen and also how much it might cost to procure all the ingredients. Um, and again, I think that's very analogous to how teachers go about the planning process in a classroom. They might look at what textbooks and other resources are already established and available and approved in their, in their district. And that might be where they base what is important to be learned on because they already have the resources. Um, and, and there are some little things that might also alter what recipes are selected and how specific recipes might be prepared. And that might be food allergies, how much time it is going to take to prepare that particular meal, and perhaps even something like how long the meal will keep once it's prepared. So all of those, those are all, those all go into um, the decision that might, that might um, affect how somebody goes about preparing a meal. And that is very analogous to lesson planning in terms of using existing resources to help guide and define what should be learned and in what order should things should be learned, whether or not things like the, re the readability of a text is appropriate for all the students in the class given their reading levels, um, and whether or not some students have a difficult time with certain specific ways of learning and so a teacher might alter or differentiate something. But it's, very, it's driven very much, the, the decision making regarding what should be learned and in what order is often defined by the recipe that they select and by the recipe that they follow. And that is a, that is a good analogy to what lesson. But you see, instructional design is analogous to something that is a lot bigger and broader than lesson planning. Instructional design is analogous to actually planning um, an event, planning a dinner party or a lunch party or a brunch party or whatever. It goes beyond just preparing a meal because th there are many things that define what, uh, what is gonna happen at the dinner party. And in fact, the number, one, um, the number one defining thing that decides what recipes might be followed and among other things um, is the overall purpose of the party. What is its point? What is its purpose? Is it celebratory? Is it, is it um, after a wedding rehearsal? Is it um, for a birthday? Is it for some kind of a retirement party? Any special event, anything that goes into the planning of a dinner party is defined initially by what the purpose of it is. Once that has been 
clearly established by by the planners then they can go about identifying what food might be served and of course all of the concerns related to cooking or related to lesson planning would go into that phase of the process of planning the dinner party but you'll notice that that the entire focus of selecting and, and preparing meals is on supporting the overall purpose of the party it's not supporting the the model or the structure of the textbook um, or even just what has been done before. It's being driven by a big fundamental goal. And the goal is, is beyond just what food is going to be served. There are other concerns related to planning a party that are also very, very important because again, it supports the purpose of the party. One thing might be what seating arrangement you plan. The other might be the music that you're going to select. Um, or conversation starters that you might sort of put have in your back pocket in order to move things along if that's part of the nature of the party and sometimes people plan games or other events associated with the party that are kind of in keeping with the overall purpose of the party but um, again the biggest difference is that when you plan a dinner party the decisions that happen in the kitchen related to following a menu are driven exclusively by what the purpose of the party is. And that's really important because teachers need to understand that when they are involved in instructional design projects like the one that, that we have for this class, the decision making that goes into what's going to be learned, what's important to be learned, in what order will it be learned, and what kind of context would provide some meaning and purpose is something that is decided upon outside of the resources that are available for the students. And that's a very, very important thing. Now, you are in the process of learning some specific um, strategies at various stages in the instructional design process. And some of them can be somewhat detailed and somewhat laborious in terms of trying to trying to actually go through that process, the process of flowcharting content and concepts, for example, or identifying a big picture and trying to graphically represent it, um, trying to identify the um, the uh, a context that can provide meaning and purpose is something that you might never have done as a classroom teacher, but it is as important to in education as knowing what the purpose of a dinner party is to somebody who's planning that. And just to give you sort of, again, following the analogy, I have provided a video, um, a YouTube video below that is th that addresses some strategies f just for one aspect of planning a dinner party. And in this case, it has to do with, um, with creating a seating arrangement. And you'll notice when you watch that video that lots of factors go into just that one decision based on, again, the purpose of the party and who's being invited and that kind of thing. And so again, I'm presenting that video just as, as an analogy to the fact that we've got pages of notes and an entire chapters in the course text on one particular aspect of the design process and it may seem like overkill but the reality is getting good at all aspects all important aspects of the process is what will make for good instructional designers and what will make I think for more effective educators in general now the other analogy I won't spend as much time describing but it relates to instructional design versus lesson planning I think per pretty well too and that's the difference between uh, buying a house and designing a house and as you may have guessed the the buying buying a house is analogous to lesson planning that is you have some goals in mind and um, and those goals might come from a, a collection of state or professional standards or they might come from the uh, the way the table of contents is arranged in a textbook or they might just come from some basic program or movement within a school district or just what's commonly accepted but you you have some structure already in place and what you're doing is you're going to find and to plan out what what learning experiences on a day-to-day -day basis will my students have that's kind of that th that level of decision making is the same level of decision making that goes into picking the best house given the budget and the number of kids and the location and that kind of thing. It's at that level of decision making that lesson planning or even curriculum development lies compared to instructional design. And if you look at the, uh, the diagram on the right, when you go to design a structure as opposed to buying one, 
the the decision making um, that happens is related to things like well first of all there's the overall purpose of the structure that's going to drive everything related to the design what's his point is it a house is it a church is it a storefront is it some kind of a storage facility what's its purpose and then once you are absolutely clear about the purpose then you have to look at certainly budgeting issues that's super important but everything then related to the design is driven by the purpose of the structure and it is you as the designer who comes in with that purpose either the purpose is something that the client gives you or it's the purpose that you are aware of yourself or that you identify and clarify for yourself and then you begin the process of collecting the resources that you need in order to make that um, the the planned structure um, support and serve the need of that purpose and it's a different way of thinking and a different way of looking at the decision making process that is involved in instructional design versus lesson planning and I just wanted to point that out because some of you some of the students and some of the teams have provided um, instructional design goals and objectives and, and, a, and a framework that seems to deviate somewhat from the important structure that has been provided by the client and that is she wants you her students to learn something important about plants and animals and cellular structure and in the process of learning that she wants the students to be able to acquire and apply scientific thinking scientific reasoning skills um, and perhaps some other important skills as well, like collaboration and maybe communication skills. And because that is the purpose, then you're, 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 the way you think about the decision making from that point on goes beyond what you already know about what kids you think kids should learn about cells or what kids might learn about science. It goes beyond that. And so things like identifying instructional contexts that provide meaning and purpose are defined not because they're common or standard um, or convenient, but because they will serve the purpose of helping students acquire that, ultimately acquire that instructional goal. And that is what instructional design is all about. It's about identifying goals that can be um, accomplished through the process of instruction and then making really good decisions about what resources and experiences learners will have to accomplish those goals. And so the next collection of presentations break down each of the steps in the instructional design process and just presents a little bit more detail, a little bit more um, examples associated with each step in this process. And again, it, it's a process that goes beyond lesson planning or curriculum development.